guys so i asked you guys to choose what you want me to recreate for valentine and you chose number one and i also do love number one so let's just go ahead and recreate it hi my name is dara taylor welcome back to my channel so this is what i'm going to be working with this is a peach color lace and this is also like a lavender plain material so i couldn't get red i tried getting red of this type of lace but i wasn't able to so this is what i'm going to be using today I have my paper this is what we are going to be using to draft our basic bodies so the first thing I did was to measure out my half length and my half length from my shoulder to my waist is on 15 inches so I just used my marker to make dotted line all over it marking out 15 inches which represents my half length so your half length may vary from mine but mine is 15 inches yours could be 16 inches but mine is 15 so I just marked went ahead to mark around dotted lines and then I'm going to use my ruler to connect it which is going to form what my half length using my straight ruler I'm just going to go ahead to mark a straight line across it so this is going to represent my half length so it represents my um, half length so after ruling is the next thing we are just going to do is coming at the top of it we are going to mark in our shoulder area so our shoulder is 14 mine is 14 14 divided by 2 because this paper is supposed to be on fold so mine is um 14 14 divided by 2 is 7 so before then i came down by 1 inches for my shoulder slope from the point where i came down by 1 i then came down by 7 inches which will represent my armhole area so and i then went ahead um to connect the lines together so you can see what i did so yours should also have a shoulder slope it is essential the next thing i I did is placing it at the top of my paper also i went in to mark in my neckline width so we're going to be marking in our neckline now and mine is three and three inches but and then for the front it was three and a half i marked here but you could use four inches if you want so i just used my curve root to connect the line together this is going to form our neckline after um, connecting this, we now have our neckline. The next thing I'm going to do is, from this point, I'm going to connect it to our armhole area. So that is now going to form our shoulder slope. So you could see what I did here. I connected my neckline point and my armhole point together. So you could see that it formed a slanted line at that point. You can see what I did. So you could see that it um, point is sloppy is curved right so after that the next thing i'm going to do is below my armhole area i'm going to go ahead to mark in my boss circumference i'm going to mark my boss circumference my boss circumference is eight inches and how did i get my boss circumference it is divided by four so mine was 32 divided by four gave me eight inches so after doing this from the next thing i'm going to do is i'm just going to elongate this all the way across you could see what i did then using my curved rule i'm just going to connect the part at which my boss circumference ended so you could see what i did i connected it together it's nothing hard and this is going to form our armhole area currently now so after doing that i came below that is my half length line the point at which i have my half length i then mark in my waist circumference i marked in my waist circumference which was six inches and then i'm going to connect it to the boss circumference using my ruler i went ahead to connect it together and it gave me a slanted line also you could see what i did the next thing i'm going to do is to add in my allowance so i'm going to be working with three inches allowance for the waist and three inches allowance for the bust also so my allowance i'm working with is three inches using my ruler also i then connected the bust and the waist line together you could see what it formed it also formed a slanted line at that point the next thing i'm just going to do is at the top of my pattern paper i came at the top and i went ahead to measure out where i wanted my lace to start from and where i wanted my lace to start from was six inches so yours can vary but mine is six inches so after doing that i used my straight ruler to mark a straight line so this is going to rep represent where my lace is going to be starting from so you could see what i did over here the next thing i'm just going to do is using my curve ruler i'm going to use it to curve it to this point i started from my armhole point you could see the armhole point i then connected it on top of the six inches just watch what i did and you will understand 
now this is the curve i want my lace to be that's how i wanted my lace and the plane to be so if you want yours to be straight there's no need to do this but this was how i wanted mine to be i went ahead to mark the upper part the lace area and the lower part the plane area so that i will not get confused so i advise you to do that also the next thing i did was just to cut out everything i did over here so you can see the pattern as which i'm cutting it all out i first cut out the plane area before i went ahead to cut out the lace area so for the back part the first thing i went to i had to do was to add in my zipper allowance and i'm going to be working with two inches for the zipper allowance but i advise you to use one and a half not use two inches so after marking it with a dotted line i then went ahead to use my straight ruler to connect the lines together so this is now going to form what our zipper allowance area so this is going to form the zipper allowance area so bringing in my front bodies i placed it on top of it i started it from the point at which my zipper allowance area was so you could see where i put it i did not put it at the end of the paper sorry at the beginning of the paper i started it from the line of my zip allowance so i just placed both of them gently the lace area and the plain area gently on top of my pattern paper so the next thing i'm just going to do is to go ahead to cut it out so i'm not going to cut out the back neckline with the same way i cut um the front neckline why is because i do not want them to be the same the neckline for the back has to be higher so i stopped at the shoulder area i went ahead to remove the front so what i just did next was using my tape i'm going to impute my back neckline so i'm just going to be working with um two inches at this point so the neckline for this part will be sorry one and a half inches so after marking one and a half inches i used my curved rule and then i connected it all the way to the zipper allowance area so using my curved rule i just connected it you can see what i did please just watch carefully what i did over this point so after doing this i'm just going to use my scissors to cut it out and after cutting it out i'm just going to go ahead to name here from the point of my um, zipper allowance area that's the bottom point i came up by quarter of an inch half and quarter of an inch and why i'm doing this is to prevent zip bulge so this is what you do this is a technique to prevent zip bulge so i'm just going to connect it to the bottom point so it's just going to give me something like a slanted shape so you could see what i did i just connected it is nothing hard so this is what you do to prevent zip bulge at when you are sewing a dress so the next thing i did was to cut it and you could see that the line is no longer straight it gave me a slanted curve so after doing this the next thing i'm going to do is to measure out my lace area because the back also has a lace at it so starting from the shoulder point i marked eight inches at this point using my straight ruler i'm just going to mark a straight line at the point just to form a straight line just as i did for the front part the next thing i did was to use my curve rule to place it directly a little above the eight inches i marked and i'm just going to mark a curve line here so i'm going to form a curve line and this is the curve line i form this is also optional but if you want yours to be straight you can make it so it's not a problem but i did not want mine to be straight i then named the plain area and also the lace area just as i did for the front part so after doing this i went ahead to cut it out you could see the way at which i was cutting it out so i represented this as my material this part is the lace this part is the plain and what i did was i left out half an inch for sewing allowance all around the part i cut so you should also leave half an inch all over the area that you are going to cut so that it will not be short when you are done with it so this is the front part i just notched the front part so that i will be able to know the middle of it i just notched it a little bit so that was what i just did here don't get confused so this part that we named the lace area this is for the front i removed the paper that i used on it and i'm also going to be notching the middle point that's the center point of it i notched it a little bit so if you're notching just notch it a little bit it's just so that you'll be able to know the front so i just placed it on top of my plain area you could see what we did how it formed i then turned it upside down and i'm just going to go ahead to place the notched area together and then i'm going to sew all over it so that's the essence of notching it so this is what i did i sewed over it and after sewing it this is what is looking like after sewing i then raised it up just as it was supposed to be i raised it up you guys can see what it formed here 
is looking like this because we've not yet ironed it so i turned it to the back part i then placed the lace inside of it you could see what i did i just turned it over and then this is the lining part also this is the lining part i also notched the lining part i'm going to be using the lining to turn it over and then i'm just going to go ahead to sew it i'm going to be sewing this area that my fingers are directing you to so this is the area i'm going to be sewing and after sewing it this is what it was and then i turned it you can see as i turned it and there we have our lace i brought it out in the middle the lace was in the middle part we're just going to go ahead to iron it out so i'm sewing the side area just to secure it and this is what is looking like guys i also went ahead to impute in my darts so to get your darts is just your nipple to nipple measurement so this is the back of it this is what the darts that i imputed is um looking like i went ahead to sew the sides also so you could see what i did i sewed the sides and i also sewed the bottom point so this is not hard i also repeated the same thing at my back area so you could see the back area i repeated it so i placed the other parts of my back on top of the back area so that i placed the second part of the back on top of the first part area so this is the zipper allowance here i'm just going to go on to sew this area but before doing that i just made sure that the both of them are sitting properly on top of each other i just made sure the plane was facing the plane on each part of it so i just went ahead and to sew it so this is what it was looking like after sewing it there we have it we've already sewn the zip allowance area so what we are just going to do is to impute our darts i'm going to show you how i imputed the darts for the front part so i came down by nine inches that was where i wanted my darts to start from so nine inches was where i wanted my darts to start from i then imputed my nipple to nipple measurement which was seven because it's folded into two so it divided by two which gave me three and a half so i came all the way down by three and a half starting from the nine inches we measured so you could see what i did and i made a straight line there i then did the same thing here i marked three and a half which is my nipple to nipple divided by two i marked three and a half all the way down i started marking from the nine inches we start we marked our um that length from so the next thing we are going to this to sew it and this is what is looking like after sewing it this is the front part of it and this is the back part of it so there you have it you have um the dart area you could see the inches i took it was not much for the dart area so the next thing i'm just going to do is to place my front on top of the back area i'm going to be placing my front parts on top of the back area just and then I'm just going to connect it through the shoulder area. So this is what it's looking like. I already went ahead to connect it through the shoulder area. The next thing we are going to do is to start imputing our body measurements. So the zipper allowance area will be our guide to know the middle part of it. I imputed my bust and then I came down to impute my waist circumference. Remember, if your waist is 24 divided by 4, so my own was divided by 4. 24 divided by 4 is 6. 32 divided by 4 is 8 inches. So after after doing this I represented it with my chalk I'm just going to use my straight ruler to connect the lines together so I used my stretch ruler to connect the bust line and the waist line together and it gave me a slanted line you guys can see so why it gave me a slanted line was because my bust and my waist line and my bust and my waist measurement sorry is not equal so if at this point you are watching this video and you've not yet liked and subscribed to this channel please do so by liking and subscribing to my channel and then this video i just want to tell you guys that this video has a part two of it and i'm just going to be dropping it as soon as possible so make sure you turn on your notification bell to be the first to know when i post the part two of it